I'm also not trying to encourage you to have a freak level of positive expectations where it's unrealistic and it doesn't make sense and it's not tethered to reality. I'm not suggesting that either. But there's something about being a person who's more optimistic than not. There's something about having a positive outlook more than you have a negative outlook. There's something about seeing not just the clouds, but the silver lining that drives higher levels of energy. And so I encourage you to think about that. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning into this video where I wanna spend a couple of moments talking about the seven best energy management strategies that you can employ. Now, here is the problem that we're facing right now. The problem that we're facing right now is a tragic convolution of burnout. There are an incredible number of people right now in uh, research and in survey data where people are describing the fact that they're feeling really, really burnout. As a matter of fact, Deloitte, which is this big consulting company, they did some research and they found that 77% of high-level professionals are self-reporting that they've been burnt out at least once and more than half of that number are reporting that they've been burnt out twice or more. Now, that's a crazy amount. When 77 Seven percent of professionals have experienced burnout at least once, and over half of that number have experienced burnout twice. I'll tell you what, that's a bit of a crisis. And let me say one more thing about that research is that 84% of millennials have to self-describe themselves as experiencing burnout. And so the relative burnout among millennials is actually a little bit higher than the average population. And, you know, most people will tell you that when you're burnt out, it doesn't just affect you on the job. Of course, it affects you on the job, but it affects you in every other area of your life. It affects your relationships. It affects how you manage your money. It affects your ability to work out. It affects so many different areas of your life. And so how can we begin to address this problem of burnout? And I started to think about this as a coach because when you think about burnout, out, really, to me, there's kind of two options. Like, what's the problem, right, with all the burnout? I think the first option is, you know, maybe just number one, the load is too much. Like, if you think about a little donkey, and if that's like a little baby donkey, and he's trying to carry this 900-pound dude on his back, well, of course, the load is too much. The little guy's going to burn out. He's just going to collapse on the on the floor, right, or on the ground, or wherever he happens to be. Uh, so, so that, I think, sometimes for people is that they're, they're, they're burnt out because they're simply carrying too much. But I think sometimes the problem with burnout is that the, the load carrier lacks energy. So imagine now we're, we're talking about still that 900 pound guy, but let's imagine now you've got this big, big horse who can handle it. And yet if that horse has no energy, then it doesn't matter how big or how strong or how talented or how much ability that horse has got. He's not going to be able to carry the 900 pound guy, not because he doesn't have the ability or the talent or the capacity, but because in that moment he doesn't have the energy. And so I'm not here trying to diagnose your burnout. It might be that you're carrying way too much. And if that's you, man, I got nothing but empathy for you. You got to try to find a way to fix that. But sometimes what it is, is learning strategies so that we can up our energy. I think for most of us, it is really important that we focus on the second thing. In other words, sometimes the load you're carrying, you can't control. You know, some of you out there, you've got all kinds of decisions that you made in the past, maybe having kids or getting into a marriage or taking on some debt or starting a business or doing things that you can't just eat easily drop the load. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it anyways, because if you did, it could cause all kinds of unintended consequences. So I can't just adjust the load, but what can I do? I can adjust my ability to manage my own energy. And so that's what I really want to focus on. I want to focus on energy management, especially as we come into a brand new year. And I want to share with you what I call the top seven energy management strategies, because what if a person has all kinds of vision? What if they have all kinds of heart? What if they have all kinds of skill? What if they're like the smartest person in the room, but they don't have any energy, right? And this is what I found with so many people. Like they got ideas coming out the yin yang, but they don't have the energy to execute. And so we have to find a way 
to have the energy to get it done. When the need is on you the most, how can you ensure that you have the energy that you need? Why is energy so important? Because number one, energy delays aging. I'll tell you what, I've seen some really young people who look super old because they're burnt out. I'll tell you what, energy also derails depression. You think about what is depression? I mean, depression is having no energy, right? It's like, man, I'm just kind of here. I'm just kind of blah. You are like that because you lack energy. I'll tell you what, having energy disables fear. It dampens anxiety and worry. Having energy defeats discouragement. I'll tell you what, I woke up this morning already discouraged with, you know, three or four texts that I got overnight, you know, people sharing bad news with me. And so as soon as I woke up, I had the discouragement that came from other people's bad news. But but that energy that's in, on the inside, because I figured out something about energy management allowed me to defeat that discouragement. Energy helps you to develop your vision and your dreams. Energy helps you to dictate your daily operations. Energy helps you to develop creativity. And I'll tell you what, energy develops and delivers incredible results. And at the end of the day, your level of energy determines what you do and what you won't do. So we can't always control the circumstances. We can't always control the situation. We can't always control the problem, the situation, the people. But what we can do is control our energy management. So here we go. Seven energy boosters. Number one, you got to eat and sleep right. Now, I can't say enough about this. Eating and sleeping. Now, hopefully, you don't eat too close to when you sleep because if you do, they tell us that that's not good. But I'll tell you what, eating right allows you to have the fuel that you need. Your brain is an energy hog. Do you know that your brain is only about 3% of your body weight. Some people it's less than that, but it's actually burning 20% of the energy that you use throughout the day. Some people slightly more than that because maybe all they do is think. And I'll tell you what, your brain actually is an energy hog. And so what that means is you need to eat the right foods. Now, what are the wrong foods? Well, obviously we know the, the foods that are processed are probably not going to give you great energy. The foods that are high in sugar, the really, really high fatty foods. I mean, obviously there's good fat and there's bad fat, but the bad fat, high fatty foods, those are the ones that you want to stay away from. I'm not trying to be your nutritional coach. Get one if you don't have one, but I will tell you this. There is food that you consume that takes energy and then there's food that gives it to you. For myself, I make sure I have my three smoothies a day. I have lots of berries. I have lots and lots and un, in a disproportionate amount of protein. I make sure that I take in foods that fuel my energy. I'll tell you what, I do have some junk food from time to time, but I limit it to one or two days a week. Why? Because I'm protecting my energy. But along with that, maybe even more important is sleep. I'll tell you what, you've got to protect your sleep. I'll tell you, you are awesome when you're just laying there doing nothing. <laughs> okay. What am I, why do I mean? Sleep. Why? Because when you're laying there sleeping, what looks like doing nothing, your body, your brain is doing all kinds of things to repair your body, to repair your brain, to repair and renew your emotions, your, your mind, your mental health, all of those things. And so how much sleep do you need? Well, I know some folks, uh, you know, who can sort of get by on six, seven hours and other people might mean eight or nine but you've really got to think about it through this lens. What amount of sleep allows me to perform at my best? I can promise you it's not like two or three. I can also promise you that it's probably not 10 or 12. It's probably somewhere in the middle. Stop cheating yourself out of sleep. You may have to say no to some social events. You may have to say no to Netflix and chill like up until late into the night. You may have to decide what really matters. And if your vision matters, if your dream matters, then your energy should matter as well. The second energy booster that I want to give for you strategy is what I call exercise. Now, you know, eating and sleeping right is number one, but number two is exercise. Now, what's so crazy about exercise is how paradoxical it is. What do I, what do I mean by that? Well, I can't tell you how many times, and I'm a runner, and I love to exercise. I lift some weights, and I do some pull-ups, and I do push-ups, and I do a lot of body weight exercises, to be honest, more than I would do heavy lifting of weights. But I'll tell you one thing I have discovered. I, I wake up probably just like you, 
you every day. And as soon as I wake up, I, I feel tired, you know? And it's funny because when you feel tired, what do you want to do? You want to just lay there even more. But then the longer you lay there, the, the less energy you actually have. It's kind of paradoxical. Whereas if you get up and you, you know, drink a, a liter of water, maybe grab yourself a coffee, and then you get into your exercise routine by expending or spending energy, you actually get it. That's the crazy thing about energy management. It's paradoxical. It's like, man, by spending energy, I actually get it back. Whereas if you just decided, I'm not going to do anything this weekend. I'm just going to lay on the couch. I'm just going to watch Netflix. I'm going to eat potato chips and drink pop. I guarantee you at the end of that weekend, you would not be refreshed. You'd be exhausted. And that's because there's something magical in your body and in your hormones and in your bloodstream that shows us that when you give energy, you actually get it back. So I wonder one question that you might want to ask yourself is what could change in your life if your exercise was consistent? Now, I don't necessarily mean seven days a week, but what if it was like four or five days a week? How much more energy would you have? And how much could that more or added energy change your life. The third energy booster strategy, the, the third energy management strategy is really, really simple, but I think this one is really important. It's effort. Now, you know, I grew up in a different era, you know, <laughs> maybe than some of you watching this video. I don't know how old you are. I, I'm sure we all have our own sort of generational stories and mantras and memories and movies. The movies that I grew up with were Rocky movies. Now, I don't know how many of you remember Rocky, Rocky Balboa, Adrian, you know, and the whole Sylvester Stallone. I mean, that guy in my mind is still awesome. He's still a legend. And, you know, one thing about uh, Rocky and, and it's, it's ca captured in songs like The Eye of the Tiger. Now some of you are going to have that song rolling in your head. My bad. You're going to be thinking about that song when you go to bed and when you wake up. You know, Eye of the Tiger is the thrill of the fight. You know, the whole, the whole deal. But it was that Rocky always had more heart than the next guy. He wasn't the best boxer. He wasn't the fastest boxer. He wasn't the biggest, you know, bad guy on the street. But I'll tell you what, he had heart. He had effort. And, you know, here's the, the takeaway. Spending energy actually gets you energy. When you spend energy pu by putting in massive amounts of effort, I'll tell you what, it actually brings back energy to you. I'll tell you, you know, Tony Robbins, I think it is, says that my energy, where my focus goes, my energy flows. So if I focus my effort on a particular thing, guess what that does to my level of energy? It absolutely accelerates my level of energy so that I can step into my highest and my best. So number one, eating and sleeping right. Number two, exercise. Number three is effort. Number four is expectations. And I'll tell you what, expectations drive energy. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, my we just celebrated Christmas and my little nine-year-old daughter, eight-year-old daughter at the time, nine-year-old daughter in that range, you know, she is a gal who gets really high levels of expectations for Christmas. And it's a simple example of the fact that, you know, some days I'm trying to get her up for school and it's hard to get her up for school because she's not expecting anything amazing out of school. But no parent has ever had to work hard to get their kid up on Christmas morning. Why? Because the level of expectations are so high that it's driving incredible levels of energy. What's the takeaway for you? Well, expectations drive energy. And so I wonder what kind of difference it could make to your level of energy if you simply started increasing your positive expectations. I mean, think about it. If you wake up today and you're like, ah, oh, life sucks. Ah, oh, my wife doesn't love me enough. Ah, oh, nobody likes me. Ah, oh, my boss is a jerk. Ah, oh, I'm going to have a hard time with making any money or succeeding or fulfilling my dreams. Well, of course, your energy levels are going to be high. Now, I'm also not trying to encourage you to have a freak level of positive uh, expectations where it's unrealistic and it doesn't make sense and it's not tethered to reality. I'm not suggesting that either, but there's something about being a person who's more optimistic than not. There's something about having a positive outlook more than you have a negative outlook. There's something about seeing not just the clouds, 
but the silver lining that drives higher levels of energy. And so I encourage you to think about that. That takes us to number five. And number five is enthusiasm. Now, enthusiasm is this thing. It literally, the actual word enthusiasm is kind of cool because it comes from a Greek word, which is entheos. And theos is, is God. In N E N is in. And so enthusiasm meant that a person was in God. In other words, they're filled with spirit. They're filled with life. They're filled with the energy of creation. And I think this has everything to do with your presence. How do you show up? How do you show up? I'll tell you, I've had uh, hundreds and hundreds of employees over the years. And, you know, the very first way somebody walks through the door, you can already tell how they're choosing to show up. I'll tell you, sometimes people show up and they wear on their face the events of the last couple of days. Or maybe they had a fight with somebody on FaceTime while they're driving into work that day, right? Or maybe sometimes tragically, they may have gotten some bad news. I mean, who knows, right? We can't judge until we ask the question. But I'll tell you, you have a choice about how it is you show up. I'll tell you, you have a choice about, am I going to put my game face on today? Am I going to be a professional? Am I going to operate at a high level or am I going to still keep playing here in the minor leagues where all the kids and the amateurs are? And I'll tell you, I think it marks a massive step in your development when you choose enthusiasm. When you say today, I'm going to show up, I'm going to bring my best energy, I'm going to bring the best of me, and when I do, it's going to make a difference on the people of, around me because your energy actually goes not only where your focus goes, but also where your enthusiasm goes. And so if you want to have high levels of energy, then make a decision about having a high level of enthusiasm. But if you like having that low level of energy, then just choose to not have any enthusiasm and you'll stay at a low energy place. But the problem with that is you probably not get a whole lot done. Number six, and this is the sixth energy boost that I'd like to share with you is to, and it's similar to uh, ending, uh, to having enthusiasm, but it's not exactly the same. And it's this, end negative thinking, end it. Now, negative thinking The way I think about negative thinking, thinking about negative thinking, the way I think about it is this. It almost acts like a rust. In other words, nobody sort of just wakes up and is like, I'm going to be negative. You know what I find is that there's just a little bit of something bad that happens here and then you see someone's social media post there, and then you get a kind of maybe a nasty uh, text message from a judger or a hater there, and then you get an, another negative experience that happens here, and pretty soon what happens is you find that there's a corrosive impact on your thinking. Now, your thinking is so important. I mean, in, in one sense, now I, I know I'm oversimplifying it, but in one sense, all you really have is your thinking. Because imagine you, you found yourself in a situation, and I've been in a situation like this where, where I lost everything. The only toolkit I had at that moment was what was going on here. Now I have a relationship with God, and yeah, I've got a mom and all of those things. But like at the end of the day, I'm trapped here, like between my ears. This is where I live. And if this is negative, if where you live is negative, I mean, imagine living in a home, which is part of the home I grew up in, where where there was nothing but nonstop conflict. It was really hard, man, to have high levels of energy because the entirety of your day, you're literally just trying to survive when you live in a high conflict environment. And I think that, that mentally, that's where a lot of people live. Now, you may be blessed and that you don't have a high conflict environment like physically. Okay, great. Yeah, you. But, but what if like up here, it's all negative. I found myself like, cause I run and when I run, I listen to podcasts. And so I, uh, I listen uh, and I do a lot of audiobooks too. Uh, but one of the things I'm always interested in is politics and uh, I'm a political kind of junkie and I love to listen to different people's perspectives and different people's opinions. And I found that I actually have to limit myself to about 25% political podcast because if I don't, my, my thinking gets really negative and I'm like, man, they thought January 6th was bad. I'm going to go burn the whole freaking house. Like, you know what I mean? Right? Like, like I, I be, why? Because, because I fuel negative thinking. And so, of course, I end up with negative thinking, and then that massively impacts my energy level. So I have to really limit my diet to a small amount of political stuff, 
because I want to protect my positive thinking. Now, maybe for you, you can listen to political stuff all day and just be as happy as a pig in mud or, uh, uh, you know, whatever your metaphor is. But for me, it just didn't work because I care so deeply about issues like poverty and housing and affordable housing and things like that. And so I found myself getting into more negative thinking because of the inputs that I was allowing myself to experience. So I had to really moderate, like, what inputs am I bringing into my life? And I really encourage you to think about that. I, I would never judge you, but I would encourage you to judge you, if that makes sense, right? For you to evaluate and analyze, like, what inputs am I, am I bringing? Because if you have too much energy, uh, sorry, a, a negative thinking, what I, I think about this is like energy leakage. It's like positive energy is kind of leaking out the back door, because you have all this negative thinking. So that takes me to the seventh uh, energy booster, seventh energy management strategy, and that is to eliminate stress and worry about non-controllables. Now, uh, the reason I kind of qualify that with non-controllables is because, um, you know, you can, I guess, give yourself a little bit of room to worry about the things you can actually control. You know, um, if you actually have power over it and can control it, well, then worry about it a little bit, but don't just worry about it. Go do something about it, right? <laughs> Stop worrying and start working. Do you, does that make sense, right? But why would you spend all this time worrying about the things that you can't control? I got to be honest with you. There are so many things you can't control out there. Like the list of non-controllables for you is unbelievably larger than the list of controllables. Like there's not even a comparison. And so why would I spend all my time worrying and stressing about the things I cannot control? Now we do need a mechanism to kind of work our worry through. I know for a lot of people, that's mantras. I know for others, it's really safe, healthy relationships. I know for some people, it's prayer. I know for others, it's journaling. But you you got to find out what works for you. I talked to this, uh, a gal the other day. She's like, man, I love going down to the kickboxing studio and, and kickboxing for an hour. And that's how I eliminate my worry and stress. Okay, great. Whatever works for you. But just whatever you do, don't carry it. Why? Because you're going to find yourself carrying a load. Remember at the start of this video, we talked about the fact that we're all carrying a load. But if that load is high already, why are you adding to it with all kinds of stress, all kinds of worry, all kinds of anxiety? And so, you know, I would really just say this, only flow energy to what falls within your zone of control. Okay, I'll say that again. Only flow energy through worry or work to the stuff that falls within your zone of control. So I hope these seven energy management strategies have been helpful for you. Uh, the first is eating and sleeping. The second is exercise. The third is effort. The fourth is expectations. The fifth is enthusiasm. The sixth is ending negative thinking. And then the seventh is just to eliminate worry and stress over the things you cannot control. I hope that you'll tune into our next video. In the meantime, would you take a moment to like and subscribe to our podcast, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please do share it. Leave us a positive review on whatever podcast you listen to it on and go out there. Have an amazing day. Thanks, everybody.